Hello people, this is my new way of gold induction cooker. Now, I've got a bit of rice cooking here, it's actually black wild rice. As you can see, it's boiling like crazy with a lid on it. Down here, in power wise, I have it set to about 100, 100 degrees, and it does hold a simmer. Now, what I noticed with this unit straight away is it boils slower than my T4 unit I've had, my Shoney induction, um, cooker I've had and also one of the Kmart ones I have seen and had a single experience on cooking on. It is only 2000 watts, so it is 400 watts short of the power of the more powerful units. However, anybody can make one of these things go like nothing and boil like anything, but it will be earned. The important thing is to work out how good the temperature control is down low. And I would have to say, you can see it's boiling pretty vigorously after it's been with the lid on. Now, if I come down here, you have five degree temperature differences. Now, I've seen this sort of as a gimmick on other units before, and it doesn't do much. Now, listen to this. I hope you can hear that. That is the power cycling on and off, but it is cycling much more rapidly than any other unit I've seen, which means a lot of the units will go to a simmer like this to almost off and then overboil, off, overboil. Whereas this at 95, as you can see, is slipped right down. I'll drop it to 90. And as you can see, it's flicking between two on, off, on, off in the temperature control. Generally, look, it says it's five degrees. The buttons, you can take all, you can just press, but they only, you gotta keep pressing, can't press and hold. If you wanna get there quickly, this is kind of the, the jumping in large lots from low, medium, right? Medium, high, high. This will bring it straight up. If this is one of my older units and I hit high, it would have just erupted into a volcano straight away because it's got a bit more grunt. 2000 watts is a limitation if you want to boil really quickly. But if you want to actually cook on it, right, what makes these units more important is not its maximum temperature. So all my other units have all got pans way too hot to actually be useful. So this one at least, if you set it down and you bring it back down into like 100 degrees or 105, and it will bring that temperature back down and it maintains it, it can simmer. If you wanna see it on low, in which I'll turn it down on the low and you will see at the moment that it will probably turn itself off for a while and not do much. Most of the other induction cookers at this point will either be off or go. I'll move it to medium at 80. Maybe this is like your slow cooker temperature. It will sit there, will kick in, but it's not a volcano machine, right? Um, even when I bring forth this up to 135, it's gently bringing it back up to the boil. I think that's about it. I have better temperature control down low on this than on my other units I've used, right? That's just the reality. Um, as far as settings and those type of things, look, you've got some wattage settings for RVs. I'm probably never gonna use that. Um, you do have a time setting, so I've already set this. I've got two minutes left to go on my wild rice here off the counter. It's a little bit backwards in regards to if you want to set the time, you have to jump between temperatures instead of just having the ability to press and hold the button and watch it click up really quickly. So a little bit backwards, but otherwise not quite easy to use. It's got a pause function, as you can see, instant silence. Um, and press start again. Right, if you press clear, it clears it all out. I'm taking that off at the moment because I am done with that. What I really want to find out next is I have a frying pan here with a little bit of water in it. And I'm going to click it to start. I'm going to click it to max. And this is not really a boil water test. If it was on my uh, previous induction cookers, you'd be probably seeing bubbles soon. What I really want to see is actually how big the area gets that gets hot. 
Now my pan, it is induction rated. It does have a thick copper base as well. That helps distribute the heat a bit better than some of the other copper, um, some of the other induction pans I've had before. I think it's got the iron layer in there, the copper base, I think they help spread that heat of the iron across. But you'll still see, we should, a ring in here where the um, induction coil is heating the most. I've got it on max. Um, as I said, this experiment's probably a bit slow on the basis that you are, um, you know, watching something that doesn't have as much power as a lot of the other induction cookers in the market. But as you can see, they all suffer from very similar problems. It's only a very small element area in the middle. I don't know how big the coil is inside. You can see, obviously, the center of the induction coil gets hottest the quickest, and this would be dead center of the pan, but that's not a very big area, right? Which always tells you that you're gonna have the center of the pan hotter than the rest of the pan, which is not great. And no way no one makes a bigger induction coil with these portable units. It must be either cost or something to do with the induction coil and how much current you need to draw for it. Although if that was the case, you'd think that the Australian units would be rounder and bigger than the US. But here you can go, or the one in China, but here you can go you get a bit of an idea. That's the element that's hot in the center, right? Look, obviously the heat is gonna to transfer to the rest of the pan, and you're starting to see little micro bubbles over this end, but at the end of the day, right here in the center, like the other units I've used before, center gets hotter than the rest of the pan. That is a drawback with these units. Um, that's every induction cooker I've used on the portable side so far. So as you can see from that rapid boiling water, right, you've got a lot more heat coming in this little circle and that's pretty small circle. I actually think that may be smaller than some of the other units I've used like my Xiaomi or my T4 induction cooker. I actually think their induction cooker might be a bit smaller. I'll just turn that down so we don't have a volcano in the middle. But that's a little bit disappointing on the result, I've got to admit. I would have expected maybe out to here, yeah, just another, you know, couple centimeters, another inch maybe, uh, would have probably shown me that you had more even distribution of power. Someone's gonna probably tell me I should be using a better pan or something, I don't know. I've used a few different induction pans and these were the better. I've experienced using this pan on two other, three other types of induction cookers. So that gives me a bit of an idea that the induction coil is a little bit scungy, right? Sorry, new wave, but you need a larger diameter to heat more evenly, right? Don't care how much cooking temperature control you've got right in the center of the pan, how about the temperature in the rest of the pan? That's a fail in my example. It's smaller than the others I've used, I would say, and that's a bit disappointing, especially if you do wanna max it up and fry something on this. You gotta remember that, look, this center of this pan is gonna get really hot, and the rest of this is not, right? It's just not distributing the heat out there. That's where the coil is. I let this is boil right up at the moment, just to see if really any of this heat is going anywhere but dead center of the pan in what is quite a small sort of area, if you think about that's the, you know, my hand is a bit of scale there. You've not got a lot of space, maybe 10, 12 centimeters in the center. That's a bit of a fail. They say maximum 30 centimeter diameter pan, right? And I'm saying maximum about 12 centimeters diameter of actual heating inside. That's why they say you can put a, a pot on it as small as seven centimeters, which is a stupid design thing. Who'd want to put a small little seven centimeter pot on it? It makes no sense. What would have made sense is actually getting a bigger induction element on it. Right? Bigger coil, more even distribution of heat would have been nice. Um, look, that's about it. This is my first use of this item. Um, time will tell how durable it is. Look. Um, I will have to cook a couple of things on it and see how poor that small heating surface really is. Whilst I can see water on it, it's not gonna give me an idea of how well it's gonna distribute heat for saying searing or something on it, 
when you've got it up on sear or on high, but I think that's a pretty small element for 30 centimeter pan. That's not evenly heating 30 centimeters. This is heating a small area in the center and relying right on the right on the thermal transfer on the pan for the rest of it. Oh um, look, sorry if I've gone on. I hope this has been useful. I could not find anything useful on this induction cooker online. The Australian distributor was very unhelpful. And the only thing they have online on YouTube is a million infomercials where everyone says how great it is because they're all paid to say so. This is a frank review. Have a good day.